Hello. It's, uh, probably it's six o'clock ish on Saturday, and I have been racing around today trying to get all sorts of stuff done and not achieving very much of it. So, uh, we're out in the garden, just going past the asparagus and the raspberries and the strawberries, uh, and oh, carrots and beets, and uh, the mooley, and more carrots, more beetroot. Uh, and past the broad beans because I want to show you what I did get done today. So here we are inside the brassica tunnel uh, and these are the low growing brassicas so uh, on the far side uh, over there uh, that's January King uh, in the centre it's a red cabbage and on this side uh, it's Savoy so I've got about uh, 12 or 13 uh, of each in here and they will stay in here until I harvest them and even though it doesn't look like a huge amount of work that actually took me well, probably the best part of two hours and the thing about planting brassicas is they do best when they're really well firmed into the ground so uh, make a small hole pop it in and push it down really carefully uh, but quite firmly and then fill in the hole uh, slowly bit by bit really firming it down uh, all around it and then uh, when you think you can't possibly uh, firm it anymore, firm it a little bit more. And that, that stops them rocking in the wind. I don't know whether it has uh, any effect on uh, club root or anything else like that. And I have heard, although I don't know if it's true, that uh, by firming it in really tightly around the roots uh, that it makes the, the leaves of your brassica uh, very tightly together. I don't know, who knows. Uh, I haven't yet had a sort of big blousy open cabbage. They all seem to be very, very tight with the leaves very tightly together. So you know, maybe there's some truth in it. Uh, maybe it's just hogwash. Now I do still have some cabbage plants uh, left over and my intention for them uh, is to go over near the potatoes uh, without uh, any cover or protection over them. And those will be my, well, effectively my sacrifice cabbages. Uh, because I don't want to uh, prevent uh, the local wildlife eating at all uh, so the cabbage and white butterflies and the cabbage moths uh, can certainly lay their eggs on those eat away to their heart's content <laughs> and, uh, and that will support the next generation because of course uh, by having that wildlife around it will encourage other wildlife too uh, and then uh, at the end of uh, butterfly season so in early autumn uh, those cabbages uh, will get covered over so that they've got a cover over them going into winter uh, and then uh, if there is a lockdown situation uh, where the government tell us to keep our birds under cover uh, I know that I'll be able to feed the birds those cabbages because they would have been under cover and protected from being pooped on by wild birds uh, for a suitable period uh, before lockdown and I think it's worth uh, thinking that far ahead I know it's only April uh, but December comes around uh, fairly quickly and if we do have another lockdown situation I want to be able to give the birds uh, fresh vegetables from the garden uh, without any fear that they've been contaminated. But no matter how busy a day is, uh, I'm always happy to take time uh, just to look around, appreciate what we've got here, look at how all the plants are doing, enjoy the chickens and ducks. Another one of those moments where I count my blessings and appreciate the beauty of what's around me.
couple of days ago uh, when I was in the kitchen something caught my eye out of the window and uh, and I stood and watched and then I got the binoculars out and used the binoculars and I thought well I could try and go and get my camera but by the time I do uh, it's bound to have gone well I tried it anyway and I changed the lens because I've got a lens that allows me to film a little bit further away than normal and I managed to get a little bit of footage of uh, the buzzard. I've shown it to uh, Tony and Louise from Kafka Diva who are uh, very much into their bird life so Tony has confirmed what I thought uh, that it's a female buzzard and she's very relaxed uh, so here's that footage. <laughs> A few weeks ago uh, I started a raspberry experiment where I cut one half of the autumn fruiting raspberries uh, down to the ground and the other half I just cut back by about half so they were about uh, 18 inches or so high because I've been told uh, if you only cut them back part way rather than all the way down to the ground uh, they'll fruit earlier. Uh, so I thought I'd do an experiment, uh, raspberry plants in the same bed so they've got the same conditions half and half. So these are the ones that I cut down to the ground. Um, the growth is about halfway up my arm so about uh, 10 to 12 inches high. They're looking pretty good. And these are the ones that I cut much higher um, so inevitably uh, they are higher. However already uh, there are flower buds forming. Oh, This is really exciting. These really do look like they might fruit an awful lot earlier. Well oh, big thumbs up to that experiment. Because I was sitting down uh, someone decided they needed to come for a cuddle. You are a funny old boy. Yes you are. Down you go then. There you go. <sighs> Got cat hair everywhere now. <laughs> well, I've had a cup of tea since lunchtime so my tea ometer uh, is very low so I'm going to head inside get myself a cup of tea sort out some supper and then it'll be time to put the birds to bed and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow